First of all, we need a reference image. So let's go to the front view and we can load the reference image either by dragging and dropping it from the Windows Explorer into the viewport or we can go to Options, Configure and here on the back tab you can load an image into this slot by navigating to the folder where you saved that image. The first thing I want to do is change the size of this image to 3000 pixels which is the size of the image that I downloaded and we can use half this number to offset the image on the y-axis and put that building on the floor. I also want to move the image over to the left a bit to center the arch in the viewport. Before we start modeling, let's have a closer look at this building. Usually what I do is I break an object like this down into some basic components and I try to ignore all the detail that I see uh, in this image here. So one of the basic components on this building would be the stairs down here. And then we have the arches and we have a wall behind those arches with some windows and doors. On the top of the ground floor we have a ceiling which would be another basic component and then we have a fairly large section with all those windows and at the top of the building we have another ceiling and then we have the roof with the railing and the roof tiles. And we're going to start modeling this building by adding the stairs. And for the stairs I would like to start with a fairly simple object. So I'm just going to create a basic version of those stairs. Uh, the reason being that right now I don't really know how big the distance between these pillars and the wall behind those pillars is. And unless we do a block out, we'll have to wait until we finish modeling the ground floor before we can make a decision on how deep these stairs need to be. And then we can also decide on what detail we want to add to those stairs. So let's start by adding a cube and I'll jump back to my viewport settings because I want to add some transparency to the background image so we can see our objects a little better. Instead of scaling and moving this parametric object around and trying to line it up with the stairs, I'm going to make this editable right away. And I'll use axis center and move the axis to the bottom of this object. And now we can put that cube on the floor. And we can also scale it. And I'm going to scale this to the height of that first step. And I'll go for 12 centimeters here. And we can also scale this cube on the x-axis and roughly line it up with the edge of the image here. And I'm going to use the right side of this reference image as a rough guide. If you take a look at this cube in the perspective view, I can already tell that it's not deep enough, so let's scale it a bit on the z-axis. I'm going to hold down the shift key and let's do maybe 300% here. Next we're going to add the second step. So let's switch to polygon mode and I'm going to select the top polygon and use extrude inner and let's do an offset of maybe let's see let's do 40 centimeters that looks okay. And I'm going to extrude this polygon up to create that step and I'll use maybe an offset of 22 centimeters here. The third step is the same height as the second step so we can repeat what we just did. So I'll use extrude inner with an offset of 40 centimeters and I'll extrude this polygon up by 22 centimeters. And this is not perfectly matching the reference image, but that's okay. I don't want to change the height of these stairs. Uh, what we can do is we can go back to the viewport settings maybe and move this reference image down a bit so the pillar sits on top of those stairs.
Now, I want these stairs to go beyond that building a little bit, but before I start moving points or polygons around, let's split this object in half, because it's symmetrical right to left, and if we use symmetry, we only have to do the work on one side of this object. So in edge mode, I'm going to use the ring selection tool to select these edges here, and we can use connect points edges to create an edge loop right here at the center of this object. And now we can go to point mode and delete all of the points on the left. And we can add a symmetry object. And now we can grab these points here. And holding down the shift key, I'm going to move these over maybe 120 centimeters. So that's the basic version of those stairs finished. Before we move on to modeling the arches, there's a few things I want to change. First of all, it's always a good idea to name your objects. So I'm going to call the symmetry object stairs, and I'm going to highlight this name, copy it, use the down arrow key and paste that name and hit enter to confirm. And we can also get rid of this UVW tag this tag was created when we made the cube editable, but because we changed the geometry, it is now basically useless, so we might as well get rid of it and keep the object manager clean. Something I always like to do when modeling is I like to add some shadows, because if I render this, we only have this dull default gray material and no lights and shadows. And I don't want to use any lights, but I do like some shadows so we can see the structure and the details a little better. So let's go to the render settings and under effect, you can add ambient occlusion. And I'll stick with the default settings here, just as long as everything renders fast. So now you can see we have some contact shadows and we can see the details a lot better. And if you want to, you can change the color of this object either by adding a simple material or we can select the stairs here, go to the basic tab and use color. And if you click on this color box here, you can change the color to whatever you want. I'm not going to change, change it from white to something else, but I do want to uh, reduce the brightness a little bit. So that's the end of uh, the first lesson. In the next video, we're going to start modeling the arches.